Hey guys, hello. Hi everyone. Hi guys, hello. Are you all able to see me? Are you able to hear me? Hi guys, how are you all? Kaise hain sab log? Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Welcome back to Vidantu's Jay channel everyone and uh, As I said, if you are there on the Telegram group, you would have heard me saying that it's a very interesting but relatively challenging topic of laws of motion that we are doing today. Okay, good evening, good evening, everyone. Who all are here? Iron Man, as always, is here. Okay, assemble the Avengers, Iron Man. Come on, Vipin, Pakhi, Ayushi, Shubham, Pranati, Akansha, Robin, Prasad, Shubham, Hemlata. जगदीश गौतम तेजस सुयोग तनुजा सारिका प्रतीक अगेन एंड अगेन सोनू तेलुगु प्रणति तेलुगु या दैट्स द नेम तेलुगु फीड गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन साइंस मैजिक अभय राज गगन हर्ष म्यूजिकल समबडी नेम्ड पपुलाल इज आल्सो अ नेम देयर ओके Sanjeev, Sakshi, Varun, Vishal, Devraj, all unique name. That's good. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Now it's going very fast. I'm not even able to read the names. I'm good, by the way, everyone. Okay, I hope all of you are doing good. Okay, cool. So, guys, welcome back. This is uh, Vidantu Jee channel, and this is specifically the time when we meet with the new 11th standard students. I'll not. I'll stop calling yourself students from 10th moving to 11th. Now you are 11th standard students for me. Okay, we have learned already so much. We have learned units and dimensions. We have already covered vectors, calculus. We have uh, covered motion in one dimension, two dimension, projectile motion, and now we are on laws of motion. So a lot of things have start have been studied since the month of April. So April, May, June, mid June is going on. Yeah. Okay. I hope you guys are uh, regular so that even during lockdown, even during the time when schools are yet to open after a long time, you can still be. you know ahead of what is going to happen in school so at 7 o'clock obviously we meet but uh, let me tell you first with especially students who are new on the channel those who do not know me guys this is me your uh, suri sir i am i'm an alumnus of iit bombay but nowadays i'm living up to my youtube avatar that is mugambo okay why am i called mugambo by the way is because when you will crack this examination of ge mugambo khush hoga okay and as i said there is specific timings that we meet here for j2022 so for all my j2022 aspirants that means new 11th standard students the timings that you should keep in mind is every day at 7 pm we meet for theory discussion and 8 pm on certain days which is tuesday friday and saturday we meet for mcqs discussion okay also these are your teachers love sir teaches you chemistry arvin sir teaches you mathematics and i try to teach you all physics okay awesome awesome very nice if there are any j2020 or 2021 aspirants then guys for your exam preparation as your je examination is coming close or maybe from 11 standard you want to cover up something then at just rupees 1 you are now eligible to go for any micro course on vidantu's platform yep means what say any topic from 11 standard or for 2020 student any topic you want to study at your speed and obviously not the entire subject just that chapter you want to study that is available as micro course just for rupee 1 so do take the advantage of that how can you go for it by the way in the description box of this video you will find out the link of all the micro courses okay also if you are new on the channel guys subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that whenever your suri sir is coming live you are notified okay so are you all ready for constraint motion if you are ready if you can hear me if you can see me properly guys just give me a quick shout out giving me अब बल्ले बल्ले और यो इन द चैट बॉक्स कम ऑन गाइस यो ऑसम ना दैट्स द एनर्जी दैट आई विल 
ask you from very good very good very good very good okay sprint is very beneficial yaar very beneficial so guys it's a specific type of problem solving that we are going to do in the chapter of laws of motion okay it is continuation of the same chapter and in the same chapter we are studying a particular topic which we call as constraint motion okay now what exactly is constraint motion let's start with that so what we call as a constraint motion is when a body is forced to move in a restricted way then its motion is called constraint motion as the literal meaning of constraint is yeah that's basically the restriction that you are facing right like we all just now faced a constraint with you know around uh, 10 days back we all were under lockdown that was basically a constraint for us but with respect to physics if there is a body which can freely move in a particular way but if it is not able to do so then the motion is considered to be constraint motion like if you look at these two bodies say we call them a and b if body a is being pulled to the right hand side then body b is sorry body b is being pulled to the right hand side then it will not be able to move as fast as it would because of the presence of another body and it is being connected to it so because of that motion of b is constrained and motion of a is also constrained it was actually interested in being at rest but because it is connected to block b it will have to go along with it okay similarly if you talk about say this body if this inclined plane of angle theta is absent if suddenly it disappears like it happens in uh, you know disney movies it happens right so if you suddenly disappear the triangular wedge then this block will fall vertically downward you all know that right if there will be no triangular wedge the inclined plane if you remove it suddenly the block will just fall downward but right now if it is not and rather it is constrained to move in this direction then the constraint is the inclined plane because of which the block can only move along the inclined plane surface similarly these two blocks they would ideally want to fall freely but if one of them goes down then the other one is forced to move up okay similarly if you look at this ring if you make this block move say to the left then ring would ideally want to go along this direction but it will not be it will rather move along the right hand side of this rod so this is basically what we call as the constraint motion okay because of the possible restrictions which you will come across in the situations and the same three laws of motion is what we are going to apply here but we will keep the constraint in mind okay and that's why to make it easily understandable to you i have uh, i have picked up different different uh, case studies just we did earlier also in different situation relative motion we did some case studies so here also we are going to do some case studies so say if we talk about uh, method number 1 specifically for pulley and block system then there are two methods that i would suggest method number 1 is relatively lengthy method number 2 is going to be very fast for us to be able to relate this so usually the questions which you will come across in constraint motion is when you will have constraint between two objects and question will want you to find out the correlation between their velocities and acceleration say for example m1 and m2 are the two blocks which have a massless string connecting both of them and a ideal pulley over which the string is passing okay so guys if you uh, look at this you can see that this block is moving down with an acceleration a2 and this block is moving up with an acceleration a1 so without even solving because we have done something like this earlier in our classes i want to give you three options and tell me which one is correct okay a b and c are the options that i am giving you with respect to a1 and a2 is a1 greater than a2 is a1 equal to a2 magnitude wise obviously and is a1 less than a2 come on guys tell me in the comment uh, in the in the chat box which of these options you think is right with respect to a1 and a2 how they are related here we have done this we have used it right i am not saying m1 is equal to m2 if m1 is equal to m2 they may not even move perfect yes we we used this that accelerations is going to be the values are going to be equal in terms of magnitude but time has come to check how the accelerations are same in terms of magnitude okay so let's do that 
so how do we do that first so what i'm going to do i'm going to talk about the string over here the string that you are using here is ideal and when i say ideal it is inextensible and it is massless okay also the pulley is also ideal it is massless always remember that so if i look at the string let's say it starts from this point a then this point is b it passes over the pulley comes to point c and then finally comes to point d so if i look at the length of the string the length of the string can be written as ab plus bc plus cd i can say that right okay so if i try to write it in terms of what is given to us assuming that the radius of this pulley is r then length ab is x1 okay length ab is x1 length cd is x2 and length b to c is half of the circumference so we can say it is x1 plus pi r plus x2 okay now as i said the string is inextensible so this length is basically a constant okay so if i want to find out correlation between velocities of two blocks and acceleration of the two blocks i will differentiate this thing so i will find out dl by dt i will find out dx1 by dt i will differentiate pi r by, with dt and i will differentiate x2 with dt okay so l is a constant so its differentiation will come out to be zero why l is a constant because the length of the string is not changing when the things are moving when the two blocks are moving the length is not going to change similarly the part of the string on the pulley is also not changing that is always remaining pi r so that change is zero so what you get here is dx1 by dt plus dx2 by dt now what is rate of change of x1 as block m2 goes up the x1 decreases and that tells you how fast block m2 is moving that means this is telling you the velocity v1 okay and the rate at which x2 is going to increase that's going to tell you the velocity v2 and why am i writing it as negative is because that direction is negative okay any which way we are relating only the magnitude so what we are getting here is that v1 at any point of time is equal to v2 and if you differentiate this further first of all this is important and if you differentiate this further dv1 dv1 by dt should be equal to just a second and guys yeah dv1 by dt should be equal to dv2 by dt which tells you that acceleration a1 is equal to acceleration of a2 because what is rate of change of v1 dv by dt is acceleration okay so is the derivation important definitely not i don't want you people to uh, keep the derivation in your memory what is important is the result here and more importantly how we applied it okay now this is method number 1 and you can see that it's relatively lengthy we wrote the entire length of the string we wrote it as per the variables and the constants and overall length of the string came out to be constant okay so guys if i somebody is asking why pi r and not 2 pi r from b to c it is only half of the circle no so that's why only half of 2 pi r that is pi r that's why okay now the another method that i want you people to learn here so as the string is ideal it will have the same value of tension throughout so tension is basically an internal force of the system in the first lecture only i told you what is internal force the entire system is my system pulley and blocks so tension is an internal force while gravity is an external force okay so from here the method says that the net value of t dot a should be equal to 0 this basically is something that you will learn later on in work energy and power that the work done by internal forces is usually zero so this is in a way written as the net work done in the system is going to be zero by the force of tension so in the system if you will find out the value of t dot a 
then the value of that will always be equated to zero and only and only for tension force. Okay. So now if you look at this, assuming that M2 is going up okay, and M1 is coming down, let's call this as A2 and this as A1 so that we are easily able to relate to it. Okay. So you can see that for block M2, the tension and acceleration tension and acceleration can you guys tell me what is the what is the angle between tension and a2 vector what is the angle between these two vectors tension and a2 can you guys tell me yes exactly the angle between tension and a2 tension is acting upward m2 is accelerating upward so the angle between them is zero degree while if i speak about m1 tension is acting upward while the acceleration a1 is downward so the angle between them is 180 degree so let's try to write down the total dot product for the two blocks it is going to be for the first block it is t into a into cos of 0 degree that is t dot a right and the acceleration is a2 okay t dot a2 is tension into a2 into cos of 0 put a plus sign now for this block, tension is T, acceleration is A1 and the angle between them is 180 degree and this overall should be equated to 0. Okay, First T dot A, second T dot A equated to 0. So T into A2 into 1 plus T into A1 into minus 1, this should be equated to 0. So T obviously cancels by going on the right hand side, I get A1 equal to a2 another proof for the same result which we know already but obviously we are learning so that we can solve the questions very quickly okay awesome awesome guys awesome cool now i'm sure that some of you might be finding it challenging so let me take it to the problem solving and with respect to that i will try to explain it to you okay so guys look at the first question here we have to find out the relation between acceleration of A and B. So if I pull block A down, if I pull block A down, it will pull this pulley downward and eventually this block A will start, sorry, block B will start going up. If block B comes down, block B will go up. If A comes down, B goes up. So if the acceleration of block A is A A, and acceleration of B is AB, then guys, have a look at this. If I consider the lower string, pay attention, say the tension in this string is T, okay? Then for pulley, the pulley is massless, so the total upward force on the pulley and the total downward force on the pulley should be equal to zero because pulley will not accelerate, okay? Remember that guys, the ideal pulley will never accelerate that means what their acceleration has to come out to be zero and acceleration for a body comes out to be zero when the net force acting on the body should be equal to zero so if it has total downward forces 2t then the upward force should also be equal to 2t for a pulley means what how does a pulley look like in this situation it is being pulled by two tension forces t and t like this and the same amount of upward force 2t is acting okay let's see so this 2t and over here also a 2t force by the way if required here it will be 4t it is not required but 4t it is going to be so now look at this guys what we have to write down is summation of all t dot a vectors should be equal to zero so first body is having a force of tension upward and acceleration downward so the angle is 180 degree so for a tension is t acceleration is a a and the angle is cos 180 degree put a plus sign for body b the tension is 2t acceleration is a b and tension is acting upward block is going upward so the angle is cos of 0 degree equated to 0 so what do i have is t into a a into minus 1 plus 2 t into a b into 1 equal to 0 which makes t goes away and i have a a 
equal to 2 times of AB. That means what? Acceleration of A will be twice the acceleration of B. Okay. Perfect. Yes, Pranati. Very good. Very good, guys. Very good. A, A is equal to 2 times of AB. Okay. No problem. More questions on the same lines. Look at this one, guys. Now, if block B is being pulled downward in this diagram, say with an acceleration AB, then you can see that the pulley which is connected to block B will come down. If that pulley comes down, it will bring the string also along with it downward. So A and C will have to go up. Okay. That means acceleration of A and acceleration of C. We don't know whether that is equal or not, but we can say that acceleration of A and C will be upward. Okay. Now guys, if I say that the tension in this string is T, which string? The one which is connecting A and C together. A and C are connected by the same string. So the tension over here for this pulley is 2T upward. So it has to be 2T downward also. Means for the pulley which is connecting uh, B, the tension which is coming to the block B is 2T and for block A and C it is T. So if you try to write down again T dot A equated to 0, then let's write it for block A first. You can see acceleration is upward, tension is upward. So T into AA into cos of 0 degree plus for C if I write it is T into AC into cos of 0 degree plus for B the tension is 2T, acceleration is AB but tension is upward and the block is going downward. Okay. So cos of 180 degree it should be equal to 0. Some of you might be wondering that how we are sure that the block B is going to go down and A or C are going to come up. You can try opposite also. A and C if you pull down B will go up but their motions will always be opposite that's what you have to visualize okay so if you do that the only difference will be these two cos zeros will become cos 180 and the cos 180 that is written over here will become cos 0 okay so guys this is t that i'm taking common now this is acceleration of a multiplied with 1 acceleration of c multiplied with 1 and this is two times of acceleration of b multiplied with minus 1 equated to 0 so t goes to the right hand side I am left with acceleration of A plus acceleration of C equal to 2 times of acceleration of B. Are you getting it guys? Yes, A plus C equal to 2B. Perfect. Awesome. Devjit, Tejas Raj, Sakshi. Very good guys. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yes, towards the excellence. Siddharth. Hi Vasu. Welcome. Gagan, how summation of T and A, it's not addition of T and A, it's multiplication dot product of T and A and this is coming from work energy and power that the total work done by the internal force, this is work that we are writing here, the total work done in the system is going to come out to be zero. Okay, let's see if we have more problems on this, yes we have. So guys here question says that block A is moving with velocity 5 meter per second and that is going upward. So here it is already mentioned that velocity of A is upward. So if A goes up for that B has to come down. So we have to find out the velocity of B. So definitely the answer is not going to be D or B. Okay. By the way guys if I choose a direction say I chose the direction of B as downward, if my answer will come out to be positive, if my answer will come out to be positive, then my direction, uh, the direction that I have chosen is right. If my answer comes out to be just the opposite of that, then the direction that I chose is supposed to be the other way around. Okay. So now guys, say if you have a tension force here, T. So look at this string, the same tension is passing. Okay. And same tension is coming here also. So if this is T and T, this will be 2T. So for block A, it is T and 2T and its velocity is upward. Similarly for B, 
velocity is downward but the tension is upward so now we'll write sigma t dot v as 0 okay t dot a or t dot v equal to 0 so we say that for block a it is 3t force total force is 3t taking dot product with velocity and the angle between them is 0 degree so it is 1 and if I write it for the other one it is t into vb and the angle is 180 degree so it is minus 1 equal to 0 so here it is 180 degree angle here it is 0 degree angle okay so what do we get t obviously goes out of picture I get 3 V A minus V B equal to 0. So V B comes out to be 3 times of V A which is 3 times of 5 meters per second that is 15 meters per second is the correct answer and that is going downward. So correct answer is option A. Okay. No we can't use cross product. Okay guys. No, we can't use cross product Shri Hari because work done is found as dot product and cross product will make the life even more difficult. Okay, now how about this one guys? We have to find out the relation between acceleration of A and B. So considering acceleration of B to be downward and that is why acceleration of A will be upward. So if I have say a tension T in this string which I am drawing right now all of these are passing through the same string so this is all of these tensions are T because they are in the same string so this one becomes 2T this is 2T this is 2T okay and this one is also 2T that means for block A the total upward tension is 2T plus 2T plus 2T that is 6T and its acceleration is also upward so the angle theta is 0 degree if i draw for b the total tension upward is 2t and the acceleration is downward so the theta is 180 degree here okay so let's write down t 60 into acceleration of a and cos of 0 is 1 plus 2t acceleration of b and cos 180 degrees minus 1 this should be equal to 0 okay let's see people are already responding with the answer cool guys so I have t getting cancelled 6 acceleration of a minus 2 acceleration of b equal to 0 or 6 a acceleration of a equal to 2 times acceleration of b or I can say acceleration of b is 2 sorry 3 times acceleration of a that's what I'm getting. Are you getting this? Yes. B equal to 3A is the answer that we are getting. Okay. Thank you, drummer boy. Very good, guys. Very good. Awesome. Iron Man, Jyoti, Suyog, Ayushi, AB, Murli, Nishit, Towards the Excellence, Siddharth, Madhu, Akansha, Gagan, drummer boy, Pranati, Narayana. Very nice, guys. Chalo. So now let's move to the next type of constraint. This is called as the uh, wedge constraint. Wedge means triangular uh, thing that you see here or an inclined plane. So in this case, a block of mass M slides on the wedge or triangular wedge of mass capital M. Okay. So here, if block M is going to move freely and this surface is also given to be smooth, no friction over there. And what the question says that if this block comes down on the triangular wedge, it pushes the triangular wedge to go to the left side. Okay, because there is no friction anywhere. So what it says that the if, if I call this as body 1 and this as body 2, then A1 is given to you as 10 meters per second square. Okay, and the block moves with acceleration of 5 meter per second square with respect to which that means what is given to you is a acceleration of 2 as seen by 1 as 5 meter per second square something from relative motion okay 
pay attention ah huh, guys this is not going to be uh, the same approach as we did in the case of pulley and block because no pulley is there no strings are there so no tension force so we have to find out the acceleration of the block with respect to ground so this is the direction of acceleration of 2 as seen by 1 means what if an observer is standing here on the triangular wedge or on the inclined plane he will see that the block is going down at an angle 60 degree okay so if i look at this from relative motion perspective acceleration of 2 as seen by 1 is acceleration of 2 minus acceleration of 1 yeah which means what acceleration of 2 that we are interested in finding is a21 plus a1 vector by bringing this a1 vector over here which means what a2 vector is the resultant of these two vectors so this is a21 vector which is obviously making an angle of 60 degree here and your triangular wedge is going in this direction so this is acceleration a1 vector okay so guys what we see here that this angle is 120 degree the angle between a1 vector and a21 vector so the resultant of these two is your a2 vector by parallelogram law of vector addition a2 is the resultant of a1 and a21 vector so now a2 square will be equal to a1 square plus a21 square plus 2 a1 a21 into cos of 120 degree that's what we are supposed to solve okay so in this i have a1 vector given to me as 10 a1 given as 5 and this is 2 into 10 into 5 and cos 120 is minus half okay so this is 100 plus 25 plus this is going to be uh 2 getting cancelled with 2 so i will have minus of 50 here so it is 125 minus 50 which is 75 okay guys getting it which is 25 into 3 that means i am getting a2 square as 75 which is 3 into 25 so a2 comes out to be 5 root 3 meters per second square this is acceleration of block with respect to ground okay perfect yes pranati very good very good guys very good awesome i was not expecting you people to be able to get this but you guys are awesome you guys are awesome yes the answer of the acceleration of block with respect to ground comes out to be 5 root 3 okay now this one here we have a rod which is constrained to move along this tunnel and it is going to go down with an acceleration say ar and when it tries to come down it pushes the triangular wedge to the left side with an acceleration aw we have to find out the relation between acceleration of rod and that of uh, the acceleration of the wedge okay at any instant so just to make you understandable this okay so if the rod comes down the triangular wedge moves left side so if somebody is watching from the triangular wedge guys what he sees that earlier the point of contact was somewhere here and after that it will move somewhere here you can see that okay the point of contact has moved along this direction which is making an angle theta okay so with respect to means acceleration of rod as seen by wedge is along this direction so if we try to write acceleration of rod as seen by wedge it is acceleration of rod minus acceleration of wedge okay which means what guys if i draw this this is the direction of acceleration of rod and this is the direction of acceleration of wedge okay and what we are written here is ar vector minus of aw which we can write as plus of minus aw So what is minus aw vector? It's a vector opposite to the direction of aw. So this is minus aw vector. Okay. So this is basically your acceleration of rod as seen by wedge. Okay. 
I think I need to redraw this for you people to be able to see this clearly. Okay. Yeah. So this is what was happening. I have drawn this vector. This is minus AW. This was AW. This is AR. And this is coming out to be ARW with this angle as theta. So if I pick any of the right angle triangle, say I pick this right angle triangle with this as AW or minus AW magnitude remains the same and this as AR and this angle as theta, then tan theta is AR by AW. So AR comes out to be AW tan theta or you can say R is equal to W tan theta. Okay, guys. Nice. That's what is the relation between acceleration of rod and acceleration of the wedge. Cool. Okay. Now, pulley and wedge constraint together. So, we have a block which is connected to a string and that string is passing over a, another movable pulley. And we have these two blocks which are interconnected like this. So, you can see that this is the same string which is trying to pull this block with a tension T. And this is the same string which will have the tension T over here on this movable pulley also. So the tension it creates on block M2 is 2T. So if I say that, say M2 goes down with an acceleration A2 and M1 moves right with an acceleration A1. So here again the same method that we learned, the T dot A equal to 0 method, work done method, let's write that. So here the angle is 0 degree, I can say T into A1 into cos of 0 that is 1 plus 2t into a2 and cos 180 equal to minus 1 so that comes out to be this expression so t gets cancelled i have a1 minus 2a2 equal to 0 or i can say a1 is 2 times of a2 and we are interested in finding a2 okay guys so now if we try to write the equations for the first block if you write it will be t equal to m1 a1 right and if you write for the other block it's going to be uh, it's going to be m2 g the downward force minus 2 t equal to m2 a2 okay now we are interested in finding the acceleration so we'll have to obviously get rid of t so i'm going to multiply this equation with 2 so it will look like 2 t equal to 2 m1 a1 and a1 is 2 times of a2 that means we can write it as 2 times of m1 into 2 a2 now guys these two equations just add them so if you add 2t and 2t gets cancelled i have m2 g equal to m2 a plus 4 m1 a2 so i have m2 plus 4 m1 and a2 taken common so a2 comes out to be which option guys okay it comes out to be m2 g divided by 4 m1 plus m2 that's what i'm getting that means option is a correct answer is option a yes sachin correct answer is option a <laughs> okay guys let's see more of these questions so again the similar uh, kind of situation but little complicated more so if you have say a tension t here so it will be a 2t tension here and 2t over here because it's the same string and 4g is acting downward and over here it is 2g sine 30 degree so first let's find out the relation between the acceleration say this is acceleration a1 and uh, this is acceleration a2 downward okay so if i write the t dot a equation for this block it is 2t into a2 and angle between them is 180 degrees so cos 180 minus 1 and for the other block it is t into a1 and cos 0 degree is 1 so this should be equal to 0 t goes and i get a1 as 2a2 that's what we are getting okay guys now what 
let's write down the equation for the first block for this one i will write it will be 4g minus 4g minus 2t equal to 4a2 and i am expected to find out a1 by the way and for this block it is going to be t minus 2g sin 30 degree equal to 2a1 and because we have to find out a1 i'll replace a2 as a1 by 2 also but before that because i have to find out acceleration i'll get rid of tension by multiplying this equation with 2 so i have 2t minus 4g into sin theta that is half equal to 4a1 so i have these two equations now i will add these two equations this and this so 2t and 2t cancels this cancels it two times 4g minus 2g is 2g equal to 4a2 plus a1 okay 4a1 4a2 okay so 2g equal to 4 and a2 is uh, half of a1 so we can say that half a1 plus a1 is 3 by 2 a1 this also cancels it two times i get a1 this 2 and 2 cancels as g by 3 that means 10 by 3 meter per second square is what i'm getting finally answer is option a yes sachin perfect perfect ashutosh sachin ram kishan prasad prasun siddharth tanuja bhargavi devjit very good guys very good akansha very nice guys very nice keep it up okay cool now this one guys a general uh, constraint question so in general constraint question you will have a rod which will be sliding in such a way that this end is coming down with a velocity u and the other end is going forward with a velocity v so if we look at the constraint constraint is that length of the rod is always a constant okay so if this is a variable y height and this is variable x distance so from here we can say that in this case we can write either by Pythagoras theorem or you can directly say that uh, tan theta is going to be y by x or you can say y will be equal to x tan theta. So we are requested to find out find out the value of velocities. So I will differentiate this dy by dt and dx by dt at that instant considering theta is not changing for that moment. Okay, Whatever be the value of theta accordingly. So dy by dt is u and dx by dt is v. So what am I getting? I'm getting the value of v which is being asked as u by tan theta or you can say u cot theta as the correct answer. Okay, guys, got it? Answer is option B, not u tan theta but u cot theta. Okay, awesome. Cool. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Today's session, as I said, is little challenging. But honestly speaking, you guys have surprised me. You guys have actually impressed me. You guys have solved questions beyond my expectation. Okay. So here's your homework question, everyone. You have to find out that in the arrangement, end A of light in extensible string is moved up with a velocity V. So you have to find out the velocity of block B. With what velocity do you think block B is going to move, you have to find that, okay. Also, somebody is asking how to cover up uh, the previous chapters and previous topics that Suri sir has done. So for that guys, all you have to do is go on the channel playlist. In that playlist, you will find out a playlist with name Jeetlo 2022. So look for that playlist and that is the playlist that you want to use to cover up every topic, units and dimensions, calculus, vectors, motion in 1D, projectile motion and laws of motion topic that I've done so far. Okay. Also, as I said, every day at 7 p.m. we have a live GK quiz which goes on our platform of Vedantu which has a lot of prize money and Paytm cashback at stake. So 
if you are interested and you are free at 7 o'clock usually which i'm sure you are not but then if you are ever then go on our app and play this quiz if you do not have the app what you have to do go on the play store of your mobile phone app store of your mobile phone download the app and if you already have and are not able to play update the app guys okay so let, uh, by the way if you are studying that's okay your parents your uh, elder or younger siblings can play this game okay also as i said in the beginning those who were who attended or joined the session later on for people who are appearing for j2022 sorry j2020 and j2021 if there is any chapter that you want to strengthen then right now is the best opportunity because all the micro courses of vedantu are now live available for you for just rupees one okay so do take the advantage link is available in the description okay guys also if you are interested you can join the telegram group for assignment solutions study material and the daily updates link for that is also available in the description but definitely you will require to have the app already installed on your phone okay so see you there as well hope you guys enjoyed solving the questions with me today if you did then definitely i would want you to press the like button share with your friends and if you have not then definitely subscribe and press the bell icon of this channel so that whenever your suri sir is coming live i'm going to be there with you you get the notification okay guys awesome i enjoyed this session thank you so much for participating and solving questions along with me you guys have impressed me see you all very soon till then keep studying keep enjoying physics more importantly stay safe okay bye bye guys